Hey everybody, it's Hilton of 10A Performance and welcome back to another episode of the 10A Performance Lab. Today we're going to talk about the brand new for 2024 Springfield TRP. The Springfield TRP started back in the late 90s when the FBI contracted with Springfield Armory to get the Springfield Professional Model 1911 built for the regional SWAT teams. When that gun came about, it was of course extremely well received and very popular, and what Springfield did was create the TRP, the Tactical Response Pistol line, uh, to create a more achievable and attainable uh, pistol for folks who are interested in something like the FBI SWAT pistol. At the time, the feature set was inspired by the original FBI SWAT guns, and the guns also included more individual hand fit and finishing to create a more refined but still production grade pistol. The legacy lineup of the TRP includes two five inch guns, a black five inch government model and a stainless five inch government model. And also my favorite of the lineup, which is a five inch cone barrel full rail TRP operator. And uh, you can see my retro review of that one uh, from the, the original pre-production model uh, that I had on hand way, way back. And you can check that. It's on uh, episode 58 of the 108 Performance Lab. And I will put a link up for you right up here so that you can go check that out. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new for 2024 refresh of the TRP lineup. We have a standard rail model in black and also in coyote brown, a classic five inch government style, a classic commander, which is a true four and a quarter inch bushing barrel gun, a bobtail commander in black, and also of course, coyote brown. The legacy TRP models that I had mentioned earlier uh, that are listed in the California DOJ's not unsafe gun list uh, will still be available in limited quantities uh, to my understanding. I will be reviewing the five inch light rail TRP in black. Full disclosure, unlike the other reviews on this channel thus far, uh, this particular pistol was supplied directly by Springfield Armory for this release event. Let's take a look at the specs on this pistol. We have a forged slide and frame machined right in Geneseo, Illinois. They've got a hammer forge stainless steel barrel. VZ Hydra grips, they're cut from black G10 and secured with Torx head grip screws. There's a two piece magazine well. There are two included Mechgar eight round magazines and ambidextrous thumb safety. There are three dot tritium sights uh, featuring a ledge profile with a 125 inch square notch and serrated rear face uh, with a serrated flat top slide, which leads you to also a serrated face 125 wide tritium front sight. The slide also has forward cocking serrations. There's a two piece full length guide rod, 20 line per inch front strap checkering, a long curved trigger with a polymer shoe, and the entire gun is finished in black Cerakote to include the barrel and bushing for a total black outlook. Let's take a look inside the gun now. Because of the two piece guide rod, field stripping requires a 5.30 seconds hex wrench. There's a traditional barrel bushing and GI style spring plug. The rear coil spring weighs in at 17 pounds with a 23 pound mainspring. The extractor is machined part and it's held in place with a metal injection molded or MIM firing pin stop with a titanium firing pin of 70 thousandths diameter uh, with an extra, extra power firing pin spring uh, for drop safety considerations. The slide stop is a MIM unit with approximately 196 pin diameter at good engagement with the barrel lugs for a very solid barrel fit. The grip safety and magazine catch are also MIM. The ambi safety and mainspring housing unit are cast and the mainspring housing has what appears to be machine cut checkering as it is much sharper and cleaner than you can get by just casting it. Horseshoe section of the magwell assembly is affixed with a small hex head screw and should be considered a more or less permanent installation. The fire control consisting of the sear, 
hammer and disconnector, as well as the hammer strut, uh, are metal injection molded small parts. The disconnector is highly polished on all the engagement surfaces, such that they're free of roughness or mold lines. The trigger is a polymer shoe on a stainless bow, and on my Lyman Digital trigger pull gauge, the average of five pulls came out to five pounds, six and a half ounces, with a clean break without any hitches or creep. For this video, I used a number of different holsters, uh, tactical and concealment. I used a Blackhawk T-Series for Staccato 2011 with optic and Surefire X300. I also had a Safari Land 6390, which was for a Springfield operator uh, with an X300. For concealment, I used appendix position holsters from LAS Concealment. I used their SIA 2.0 model for a 2011 with X300. I also used their Shogun, for a five inch 1911, which fits a 1911 that has a rail and does not have a rail. Both of the holsters were used with an LAS concealment Enso magazine pouch. And thankfully, uh, since the Springfield operator is basically the de facto um, standard for railed 1911s, you have a, about a blue million holsters to pick from, so you'll be all right. Before I get to work on any 1911, I always perform a comprehensive test fire protocol so that I understand what's going on with the gun. I perform an extractor function check, a slide lock test, and a jacketed hollow point feeding check. The three stages of this are uh, very reliable in the results that they provide. And since ammunition is expensive, time is precious. It allows me to get a very good view of what's going on with the gun uh, in as little as 100 or 150 rounds. Uh, things that you might not even see or see only infrequently over a much more extended period of firing. The extractor test is the first part. One magazine is fired to observe the ejection pattern during normal firing. The pattern on this gun was acceptable. Next, one round is loaded from the magazine, then the magazine is removed and the round is fired. I repeat this for a full magazine. All the rounds have to make it out via normal ejection and the consistency of the pattern is observed. Key here to understanding this test is that removing the magazine forces the extractor to do all the work without the top round of the magazine supporting the outgoing case. If you have a deal where the ejection is good except the last round of the mag hits you in the face, this is why. All right, the last round loses the support of the incoming rounds underneath it, and since the extractor is failing at its job, the case is then allowed to slip off the breech face, and then that last round hits you in the face where the other ones didn't. The TRP passes this test cleanly, right out of the box, no modifications. Next test is slide lock. I will usually take a minimum of 10 magazines and fill them with one round each. Uh, I used three of the factory eight round magazines, three Wilson ETM eight round magazines with the square wire springs, three Chip McCormick railed power mag eight round, and two Wilson 47 seven round magazine. This test gives me a real solid litmus for the slide stop function relative to various commonly used magazines. Uh, the gun has to lock back on empty with whatever magazines you'll be using. For the jacketed hollow point testing, I used the following rounds. Federal HST 230 grain jacketed hollow point. Federal High Shock 230 grain, which is sort of a budget hollow point. Winchester Silver Tip 185. Wilson Combat 200 grain with a gold dot hollow point. Black Hills with a 230 grain SXT style bullet. Spear Gold Dot 230 grain. Since it's expensive to test with jacketed hollow points, this test lets you isolate and test the most difficult situation that the gun's going to face, which is feeding the top two rounds out of a fully loaded magazine from slide lock. A fully loaded magazine is going to cause the top rounds to present in the most nose down manner relative to the feed ramp, uh, with a tendency decreasing as the stack of rounds decreases. Releasing the slide from the slide stop uh, precludes adding any slide travel and unpredictability by manually racking or slingshotting the slide forward. But keep in mind, we're trying to uh, have a consistent testing protocol. If you like to slingshot or overhand rack your uh, gun for reloads, that's fine. But keep in mind that if it only works that way, it's because you're adding slide travel. Uh, so there's mechanical deficiency that you are masking by forcing the gun uh, to feed 
by racking it manually. I completed a total of four slide drops for each ammo type, the top two rounds out of two magazines, and then I fired the total of 20 rounds of that particular ammo type, which gave me two more slide drops on a full magazine, and then I had a partial of four rounds to finish out the count. For brevity and our collective sanity, I of course edited down the footage that you're seeing. Uh, so you're seeing a sampling of the different testing protocols. Uh, there were no issues. The TRP fast jacket hollow point testing without incident fed all the jacket hollow point types using the factory magazines for each of the loads, as well as an assortment of Wilson ETM and Chip McCormick railed power mags for the uh, other types as well. TRP passed each of the segments of the test protocol with no issues at all. All right, it's time to hit the range. I used a mixture of 230 grain ball, including Winchester Valor, s and and Precision Delta. I used the factory Metgar magazines, the eight rounders, as well as some Wilson Combat 47, uh, seven round magazines, ETM plus P square wire magazines, as well as Chip McCormick, Rail Power Mag 8, and Power Mag 8. I even used uh, some Rail Power Mag 10 rounders and Wilson ETM 10 rounders, which normally are not, uh, not known for easy feeding in a lot of guns. They can shut down a lot of otherwise perfectly functioning guns. I uh, used those 10 rounders with ball and the balance of the Federal HF and a high shock that I had left over from testing. I also shot a number of 25 yard groups to get a basic feel for the accuracy of the gun. So my best groups were several three round clusters off the bench at uh, one inch center to center and another that was a little bit over. I was averaging five round groups off the bench that were around two and a half to two and three quarter inches. I was calling a lot of shots for vertical error. That was on me. What can I tell you? The gun shoots and it's clearly shooting better than I was on the testing days. Hey, sorry to interrupt the show, but if you enjoy the content, please consider supporting by visiting some of the links below. I've got coupon codes to save on all of my favorite gear, including holsters from LAS Concealment, pants and gear bags from Vertex, nutrition from Jocko Fuel, and the cert laser training pistol from Next Level Training, and of course, for all of your tactical needs, Big Tex Ordnance. You can also see longer and more detailed cut of this video on my Patreon, where you'll also see a ton of 1911 content, including a build class where we built up a 1911 together, and a ton of other tests and other projects that I'm working on. So hope to see you there. And now, back to the show. In total, 1,156 rounds were fired for this review. The only malfunctions I got were a total of two. One with a Wilson Combat 200 grain lead semi-wad cutter, and another with a single round of Wilson Combat 200 grain Hornady Action Pistol bullet. The gun was not field stripped for cleaning, but I did wipe it off. Uh, mostly I was trying to get around uh, having black sludge all over my clothing and whatnot, since I carried and used the gun for pretty much everything during the review period. I carried the gun with the Surefire X300U B model attached, which brought it in at over 52 and a half ounces loaded. Uh, it's over three pounds. Uh, with the X300 removed, it comes in at a svelte 48 ounces or three pounds even. Uh, somehow it feels light uh, and small after the prior configuration. The gun did end up with a bit of Cerakote wear. It uh, is a durable and attractive finish, uh, but getting struck with metal objects like uh, ejecting brass, incoming magazines during speed reloads and so forth, uh, they'll take their toll on the finish. Uh, you want to have realistic expectations for what the gun will look like if you actually use it. So this new for 2024 TRP lineup is a very worthy and long awaited and a little bit overdue refresh of this classic legacy lineup. So the quality of execution, the additional hand finishing, uh, the overall production processes that are updated uh, created a pistol that uh, passed my function testing with flying colors and ran over a thousand rounds without any gun related issues. And I was very impressed overall. The traction surfaces that you needed, both the 
Cock considerations on the slide, the checkered surfaces on the frame were aggressive and provided the traction that you needed. And where you didn't need traction, uh, additional hand work created uh, very soft dehorn surfaces that were very favorable. So the elephant in the room, MSRP of 1999 for the four railed models and 1899 for the two classic models, we still have a predominance of metal injection molded small parts. It is not unreasonable to want and expect more machined small parts in a gun of this price point and of the build quality that is being touted and displayed in the guns. I don't have those answers, but uh, I will tell you that the guns performed the way that I would have hoped and expected regardless of the composition of the small parts. Next questions, what would I change? Well. The 90s called, they want their two-piece full-length guide rod back. You need a special size wrench, 5.32nds Allen wrench to take the thing apart. And if you don't have that, you're out of luck. If you finger tighten the thing on when you reassemble it and you shoot, then it falls off. So can't win on that one. Let's, let's uh, you go ahead and swap it out with uh, any GI format short guide rod and closed end spring plug. Next item, Torx head grip screws are on there. I'm not a fan of Torx or hex head grip screws. Uh, I prefer flat heads because it's just easier to access a reasonably fitting tool without the risk of stripping the little socket uh, that is a very specific shape and size uh, and also risking perhaps uh, popping the head off the screw because the socket for the Torx or the hex is basically taking up space that material should be to attach the head of the screw to the threaded shaft. A nice to change item would be the three dot sights. Uh, three dot sights again are one of those legacy features like the two piece guide rod and it's a carryover from the original TRP lineup. The issue with three dot sights, it's cool that you can see them in total darkness or whatever, uh, even though you can't see what you're shooting at, but a contrasting color front sight will let you pick it out more quickly from the background and from the rear sight. So any format that you like, whether it is a color outline tritium front or a fiber optic front, uh, would have been my preference. I went into this test with an open mind and I came out with uh, great results and was extremely impressed with this gun. I'll tell you that in 2023, uh, I used a lot of different spring fields and I've been using the guns for over 24 years now. The ones that I saw last year, obviously leading into this year, 2024, when we're seeing this, uh, are the finest production guns, single stack 1911s. Uh, they're the finest single stack 1911s that I've ever seen out of Springfield. All right, not talking about anything else in the product line, so don't muddy the waters in the comments or whatever. <laughs> Single stack 1911s that they're building are the best that I have uh, ever seen out of Springfield and they just keep getting better and I look forward to seeing where they go with them. The TRP is no exception. Would I carry this TRP? Well, I did, like I said earlier in the video, uh, during the entirety of this review process. Would I recommend it to law enforcement duty users, CCW carriers, or tactically minded individuals who wish to have a 1911 for uh, high volume training classes and so forth. Well, to answer that, I would have to say, I never recommend anything without you testing the one that's in your hand. There is a very comprehensive protocol that's detailed earlier in this video that you can use to vet out your pistol. Beyond that, if it runs through, your sample runs through, then I'd say absolutely. A different way to put it is if I went back in my flying DeLorean with this Springfield TRP and issued it to myself in 2000 uh, for SWAT use instead of my issued Springfield Professional, I would not be disappointed, nor would I be underserved. All right, that was a lot of content about the Springfield TRP new for 2024. Thank you, as always, for watching. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Tell your friends, two friends, many friends, and until next time, I'm Hilton of 10A Performance, and remember, only performance counts.